Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Covenator here, bringing you another tutorial on the A10C Warthog. If you happen to miss any of the previous videos, I highly recommend that you go and watch them first to learn about the history and the design of the A10 before moving forward. In this video, we're going to actually get into the pit, as it is called, to learn about the cockpit and the main controls of the aircraft. There's a lot of ground to cover, so we're going to get right to it. When you first get into the cockpit, uh, you'll be overwhelmed with all the various gauges and indicators. The good news is, is that with the addition of the two multifunction color displays, or MFCDs, most of the operations have been streamlined and simplified compared to the older A10A model, but no doubt this cockpit is still quite intimidating. My advice? Don't get discouraged. Understand that this is a simulation that is as close as you can get to flying the real A-10. And you're here because of it. Subscribe to my channel, follow my tutorials, of course, practice yourself. And the cockpit will soon feel like your home office. Now before we get into clicking and flipping switches and learning what all they do, we need to first talk about mouse look toggle. And this is something that I don't see a whole lot of other tutorials out there explain. If you don't have Track IR, this is the first thing you need to know so that you can look around the cockpit. By default, the mouse look toggle is left control C, but I recommend binding it to an extra mouse button if you have one. To do this, after starting DCS World, click on the little gear cog at the top of your screen and then click on the controls tab and then select the general section of the controls from the drop down and there you will find the toggle for mouse look. It should be the first one in the list if not, look for clickable mouse cockpit mode on or off. The default is left alt and C. I have bound it also to my number two key, but you can bind it to whatever you want. I chose the number two key just because I have a Naga mouse and all my number keys are by my thumb. So for me, it was a natural way to deal with the mouse look toggle. By the way, for this tutorial, I will be using a mission called Free Flight Black Sea Ramp Start. It's a mission that comes with the A10C module, starting you on the ground in a cold start condition. It's perfect for a cockpit tutorial. Feel free to fire it up and follow along with me in the tutorial if you'd like. How the mouse toggle works is simple. You can see that starting off, you can move your mouse around to interact with the controls. With the mouse cursor changing color, to indicate how a particular control can be manipulated, like this switch here. Left Alt C, or two in my case, activates the mouse look mode to pan your view around. Notice that when you do this, your mouse cursor disappears. This tells you that you are in mouse look mode. You can also use the mouse wheel to zoom in or zoom out of your view. So viewing the cockpit with the mouse is easy once you understand how the toggle works. Use the toggle to turn pan on, and then use the toggle again to turn the pan off to use the mouse to click the controls. That's pretty much it. But in flight though, and in the heat of combat, it can be a bit cumbersome because after you flip the switch, you need to recenter your screen. And this can be frustrating. It just doesn't feel natural. One piece of hardware that can make all of this a lot easier is a device called Track IR. And it's a device that basically sits on the top of your monitor and looks for a transmitter that is clipped to your headset or hat. What it does is it allows you to use your head as an input device, translating your head's movements into coordinates that tells the simulator where you want to look. You can look up, down, left, right, forward, or back, and you can even twist your head. And you're just moving your head just a very small amount. It allows you a full six degrees of freedom to look around the cockpit, and it allows you to use the mouse separately. The best part is, it's completely natural as you turn your head to look at things like the right MFCD there. So with Track IR, you don't need a mouse toggle because your head is controlling the view. If I just want to look in close to something, I just move my head in a little bit. Track IR costs about 150 bucks, so it's up to you whether you think it's worth it. Keep in mind that it's not a must. You can use mouse look. 
but there is one piece of hardware that I think is a must, and that's a joystick. In my opinion, it's not feasible to fly this simulator with a mouse or keyboard. This is the X56 Rhino. It's a HOTAS joystick. We'll talk about what HOTAS means in a minute. Basically, the more buttons and switches you have on a joystick means the less keyboard commands you need to memorize. This joystick's about $250 at the time of this video, but you don't need an expensive joystick. This is the joystick I have. It's a cheap $30 twist joystick with 12 buttons, a single hat switch, and throttle slider. It means I do have to memorize more keyboard commands, but it is possible, especially once I teach you about control modifiers a little later on. The joystick in the A10C is based off the F-16 Viper stick. It's used to provide pitch and roll commands to maneuver the aircraft. Pushing and pulling the stick affects pitch, moving the stick side to side inputs roll, and twisting the joystick controls the rudder. If you want better rudder control, then you could buy some rudder pedals. The reason rudder pedals are better is because it's hard to twist the joystick without inputting pitch or roll. The stick itself has a number of buttons and switches, but don't worry about memorizing all of the buttons. What's important starting out is understanding base HOTAS functionality, as it is used in virtually every single modern day fighter aircraft. Let's start with this top switch. It's called a hat switch. It moves in four directions, and on the A-10, it's basically used to trim the aircraft in the front of the stick you have the trigger that's used to employ weapons and these two switches the trim switch and the hat and the trigger they are dedicated to their function they are not used for anything else the other hat switch like the data management switch underneath is not dedicated and this is what HOTAS is all about for example pushing the data management switch hat forward can do four different things depending on which sensor on the aircraft you are using and that's just one of the four directions of the hat switch. The TMS hat switch, it does the same thing. It's a four direction hat switch. And again, it's got four different things that it can do uh, when, you, when you push it in one direction. So if you're smart, and I know you are, you're probably asking this question. If pushing a switch, a hat switch in one direction can do four different things, how do I know which function will be executed? Well, that depends on which sensor on the aircraft you are manipulating. This is called sensor of interest. Think of it like applications on your computer. Your computer can run several different applications at the same time, but you're only controlling one at a time. That's exactly how it works on the A-10. You are commanding um, one at a time. So sensor of interest simply means which application or sensor you're controlling at that time. So if you have the TAD or Tactical Awareness Display set as your sensor of interest, the DMS forward switch increases the scale of the map. If you have the TGP or Targeting Pod set as your sensor of interest, then that same DMS forward switch zooms the camera in on your target. So the goal behind HOTAS is this. It allows you to carry out dozens and dozens of commands using just a few buttons and switches on the stick without you having to take uh, your hands off the stick without you having to look down it's pretty cool huh setting up the HOTAS bindings is easy uh, if you're already in the sim just hit escape and then click adjust controls and then select HOTAS from the drop down and you'll see all of the HOTAS controls in the future I plan to always refer to them by name. So if I say HOTAS DMS forward, you will know where to go to find that binding if you need to. Um, you'll need to do this if you're not sure which button on your joystick you need to press or which keyboard button uh, you need to press. One last thing about bindings is you can add control modifiers on your HOTAS bindings. My cheap joystick only has one hat switch, so what I did was add joystick modifier buttons to let me add joystick button combos basically to give me more hats for example with no modifier my hat is trim if I hold down the joystick number 8 button on my joystick the hat then becomes the DMS hat 
and if I hold the joystick number seven button, it becomes the TMS hat switch. So if you only have one hat switch, I recommend doing something similar. It basically lets you create additional hat switches that you just physically don't have. And all you have to do is memorize the combo. So moving on, let's do a brief cockpit tutorial here. Now I'm not going to cover every button and switch. This is just a logical approach to how things are organized. Now, this whole thing up front that you're looking at is called the front console. It's dominated by three displays. You have your HUD display up in the top left. You have your left MFCD and you have your right MFCD and they are called multifunction displays because they can show you different things. Anything from maps of the battlefield to area uh, to weapon loadouts to perhaps a targeting pod to let you get a closer look at an enemy from miles away. And once you learn some basic HOTAS functionality you'll be able to manipulate these displays without taking your hands off the stick. For example, if I use Hotas Coolie Hat Left, I can cycle through my left display. And you guessed it, if I use Hotas Right, Coolie Hat Right, I can cycle through my right display. You can also manipulate data within a given display. For example, my HUD is my sensor of interest, so DMS Forward will cycle through my waypoints and you can see that the other displays like my left MFCD and um, the other sensors on the aircraft all change to reflect this. If I hold Cooley Hat Left, this is called Long, Cooley Left Long, it makes my left display soy and now the DMS forward will change the scale of the map. This all seems a bit confusing, don't worry, we'll be talking more about HOTAS functionality in depth in future videos. So starting with the heads up display, we'll just talk about a little bit of the symbology there. There's the pitch ladder in degrees. You have your current airspeed, you have your altitude, you have your steer points, and then you have your current um, weapon that you have selected, your weapon mode. Uh, moving up to the top, you have your accelerometer, which shows you how many G's is in the aircraft. You've got an angle of attack indicator, that's good for landing. You have your magnet compass. You have your aerial refueling indicator under that. Below the HUD, we have the upfront controls, which allows you to enter a variety of data. Think of it as a primary computer's keyboard for the aircraft. Below that we have our emergency strip, jettison, uh, fire T-pull handles, and fire extinguish switch. And below that, just going left to right here a little bit, we have our left MFCD. Uh, we have our radar warning receiver for friendly aircraft and foe. We have your countermeasures here, uh, vertical climb speed indicator, indicated in a thousand feet times a thousand. Below that we have our altimeter, and below that we have a whole bank of gauges for the turbines on the aircraft as well as the APU. And we have hydraulic pressure, fuel quantity, and fuel selector switch. Moving back to the left we have uh, the uh, UHF repeater. We have no, another angle of attack indicator, clock, backup attitude, and we have our armament uh, HUD control panel which enables the arming of all the weapon systems on the aircraft. And then we have uh, a landing control panel here with landing lights, anti-skid, indicators for the gear, flaps with the big lever right next to it that actually raises and lowers the landing gear. Then going back to the center, starting at the top, we have the attitude directional indicator, the horizontal situation indicator, uh, navigation mode select panel, uh, target identification set laser control panel, and all the breakers on the aircraft. And that pretty much covers a brief overview of the front console. And if you're saying, whoa, wait a minute, 
I don't know what all those things do, or even half of them maybe. Don't worry, we'll be breaking it down in future tutorials. So on the left, we have what you guessed, the left console. You're probably thinking, man, that looks worse than the front console. Well, it's all laid out pretty logically. On the front control up towards the front here, this is the fuel uh, control panel. It does everything uh, regarding fuel. Um, after that, we have the uh, throttle engine control panel, which is where your throttle stick is. That can be separated left and right to control each engine separately. We have the auxiliary lighting panel. Below that, we have the SAS panel, which dampens and improves flying characteristics while also stabilizing the aircraft while firing the gun. We have the IFF panel used to identify friend or fro. That panel is non-functional in the sim. And uh, after that, we have the emergency flight control panel. Uh, we will be covering that probably with a bunch of tutorials on emergencies. You have all your radios here. VHF, AM, FM radios, uh, one UHF radio, stall warning control panel, secure voice panel, that's not implemented in the sim. And uh, all the way in the very back you have your master ground safety. So if you have a terrorist waving a gun in front of you, flip that switch and you'll be able to fire your gun while you're sitting on the ground. And that's basically the left console. Uh, moving over to the right, we have, you guessed it, the right console. And again, it's, it's laid out uh, pretty logically. Up front, we have the countermeasures panel with the canopy and ladder deployment to the right of that. We have the caution light panel underneath that. Electrical power panel with all the battery and generator switches. We have the control display unit or CDU. This is the navigational computer on the aircraft which is mirrored up there to my right MFCD. Uh, we have the environmental control panel which has all the switches for oxygen and air pressure control such as windshield defogging, uh, pitot heat, de-icing, all that jazz. We have the lighting control panel which is back here and, uh, and then inboard from the light panel we have three nav navigational radios, HARS which we'll probably never use, ILS and TACSCAN or TACCAN and uh, that pretty much covers the right console and uh, finishes our brief look at the cockpit and again it was the goal here wasn't to go through every switch and give a detailed explanation um, that's just information overload um, I wouldn't expect anyone to be able to retain that so this the, the goal here was not to cover every little switch and dial but rather just present a high-level overview of the cockpit uh, and controls with more of an emphasis on how the controls are grouped and how they're organized and this will help you develop what are called flows later on and we'll be getting into that uh, in fact in the next video we will uh, begin to learn more about flows as we learn flight preparation and startup procedures and this is probably where you're going to learn a lot about the aircraft because then we will be going through um, a lot of switches and a lot of dials to, to get this thing started so well that does it for this tutorial I hope you enjoyed it or at least found it to be informative and who knows uh, maybe even learn something new I mean that is my goal if you like what you have seen uh, make sure to like and subscribe it really does mean a lot and con encourages me to continue the series if you have any questions let me know in the comments below for now I think I'm gonna take this hog up for a quick patrol flight happy flying out there and thanks so much for watching this is the Covenator signing off.